Well, I made a huge mistake today, guys. I blamed my husband for cheating on me. But oh boy, the text messages that I read, which I thought were 100% proof, turned out, ugh, it was definitely my mistake. My boyfriend and I have been dating for eight months now. And he's honestly one of the best boyfriends I've ever had. He's super kind, considerate, and has helped me through some dark moments and I was going through when we met. We currently don't live together, but things have been going really well. We hardly fight, and if one of us have a problem, it's easy for me to feel like I can approach him. About a month ago, I got a text from a friend of mine with a picture of my boyfriend eating ice cream with a woman I didn't recognize. He was supposed to be at work, and my friend, she works in the same area as the ice cream store, saw him there instead. I'm a little bit paranoid because of a previous partner cheating on me before, so, of course, the alarm bells start ringing immediately. I talked myself through it and decided it was most likely a friend and just forget about it. So, let's fast forward to Friday. I got an early day from working remote and wanted to surprise my boyfriend at work and take him out during his lunch break. When I got to his office, though, the receptionist said he was out of office for a few days and would be back on Monday. I tried not to freak out, but I did a bit, and drove to his place. He was there and let me in, and it was just him. He told me he wasn't feeling too well and called out for a couple days, and he was sorry he forgot to tell me. I stayed over, and we got takeout food. Eventually, we both fell asleep on the couch. Well, I woke up around 3 a.m., needing to use the washroom and saw his phone. Unfortunately, curiosity got the better of me, and I knew his password by catching it a few times when he entered it. Not on purpose. His text messages seemed normal besides two conversations. One to a group chat with a bunch of people I didn't know, and one to a man named Jay. The group chat stood out because the people in it talked to my boyfriend as if they were family. Inviting him to vacations, outings, etc., but... I knew they weren't his family because I've met them before. One person in the chat named Christine also talked about how much their ice cream date meant to her, so I assumed she was probably the woman from last month. The texts to Jay were sparse and one-sided, with my boyfriend sending random I love yous and I miss yous messages every now and then. I probably should have realized that what was happening, but being the idiot I am, I took it as him having a partner and me being the side piece. I woke him up immediately and showed him the phone, asking who the duck Jay and these other people are. Well, at this point he looked absolutely furious. I knew then that I ducked up bad. He's usually very stoic and collected, but the moment he saw the unlocked phone, he got up and snatched it. He opened the Photos app and pulled up a picture of him and a man together. This is Jay, my husband. He killed himself five years ago. He then explained to me that every year on Jay's birthday, their wedding anniversary and Jay's death anniversary, he and sometimes Jay's family members would do things Jay liked to do. On his birthday, which was last month, my boyfriend and Jay's older sister, Christine, got ice cream at his favorite ice cream spot. He had taken a few days off this week because, well, this was the week of his death, and they all planned on visiting his grave. I'd known my boyfriend was bisexual, but I had zero idea about Jay or his family. After he was done explaining everything, he calmly asked me to leave and not to contact him until he contacted me first. I love this man so much, and I don't want to lose him. But I just accused him of cheating on me with his late husband. I have no idea where to even go from here. What's up everybody, Mr. Reddito here, so this story is definitely intense. There was an update posted, it came out about a week after the original post. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe for daily videos, and let's see what's happening in this week-long update. Hey guys, sorry for the lack of answers for the last few days. 
Anyways, here it is. We have not broken up. He called me about two days after I made my initial post ready to talk. I brought up some of the points a few people had about it being a little unfair that he kept the knowledge of his late husband from me after so long. And, well, he agreed. He admitted that he was just scared that by telling me that he was forgetting Jay, he acknowledged that it was an unhealthy way of thinking about it and that he didn't mean to make it seem like he didn't care. Of course, I also apologize like a million times for snooping through his phone and not coming to him earlier about seeing him with Jay's sister when it all went down. We both agreed we had started this relationship too fast, especially for people who both weren't looking for something serious initially. We talked for hours over the phone before meeting at his place, talked some more, talked about what we want from this relationship, and decided for now, at least, to try to make things work. We're both deeply broken people, and we thought that with honesty going forward, we could support and help each other heal. So, I want to thank everybody deep down for all the comments and all the help and responses, even the not-so-kind ones. They really helped me open my eyes and think as well as push me to get a therapist. Oh boy, let's go ahead and hop straight into the comment section of this one. The number one comment says, Oof, this was a tough one. I feel bad for the boyfriend. I was also a young widow about his age and figuring out whether, when, or how to tell people that I had a whole life and husband previously. That's a rough one. And I definitely chose poorly a few times. A situation where something seems casual and then you start getting more serious is basically the perfect storm for that, incidentally. I think OP could have handled it better, but being obviously genuinely apologetic does go a long way. The boyfriend clearly thought so anyways. Alright guys, so I have one question to you. Do you think that the husband should have told his wife about his previous relationship without it getting to this point? Drop your thoughts down below. Let's talk about it. And I'll present to you now story number two, the title. My mother-in-law shows her true racist colors. My husband and I have been together for four years and we just got married in October of 2022. He's amazing, quite literally the man of my dreams, and I have an amazing life with him now. My parents and the rest of my family love him. I'm Native American and have a really big family, and he comes to family events, holidays, cookouts, etc., and I haven't heard a single member of my family say they don't like him. My husband's family is very small. Other than his parents, he has one brother, his wife, and their two kids. His brother and his family live multiple states away, so we only see them around the holidays and they don't really have much extended family. So, the only members of my husband's family are really see are his parents. His parents are the stereotypical white conservative small town Christians. My husband is no longer religious, by the way. Mother-in-law stays at home and tends to the house, while father-in-law does the work. I was worried about his parents' beliefs at first as I practice my native tribe spiritual beliefs. I'm very left-leaning socially and politically. I don't dress very conventional and my husband and I have no desire to have children. But they were pretty chill with me when I met them the first time. His dad, well, I have no problems with, but over time I've begun having trouble with his mother. She just flat out doesn't like me. According to my father-in-law, she has said I'm, quote, not the kind of woman that needs to be with her son. Her reasoning is because I don't act like a woman. I won't be a housewife and I have a man's job. I'm a flight paramedic for a service that airlifts critically unstable patients. I love my job and I love being a paramedic. My husband has never expressed that he wants me to be a housewife or take up a stereotypical feminine job. If he did, we would not be together. But apparently, that's what his mother thinks he needs. 
When I first met his parents, we've been dating for about five months. Mother-in-law said at first that I didn't look like the kind of woman my husband would ever bring home. I didn't take it to heart. I figured she didn't mean it in a harsh manner. When they asked what I did for work, I told them I was a flight medic. Father-in-law said that was awesome, while mother-in-law just kind of frowned and didn't say a word. Whatever. She's pretty cordial in the beginning, but as my husband and I got more and more serious, she began to not like me more and more. It started with snide comments here and there. She would manage to sneak into conversations the fact that she thinks women should be homemakers or have jobs like a teacher or caretaker. When started working 48-hour shifts, she asked who was going to take care of the housework. My husband told her he would while I was gone those two days. At this point, she gets upset and said it isn't fair that I made her son do it all by himself while I left. My husband told her that we split household chores evenly and that it's fine. One day, we were over and she went off on a rant about how she missed when women acted like women and men acted like men. She started talking about how women needed to start being housewives and mothers again, while the men work and provided like they should. While she never directly said it, I knew she included me in that conversation. Father-in-law told her to calm down and that this was not the time for that kind of discussion, and she got mad and said, Well, it's just the truth, and looked in my direction. I'm not an idiot. I knew this rant was just a way for her to tell me how she felt without directly telling me. My husband was pretty angry when he left, and I can't say I was too pleased. I told him she was allowed to have her opinion no matter how stupid it was, and I wasn't going to lose sleep over the fact that she still seems to be living in the 1950s. He said he was angry about the blatant disrespect. He talked to her about it and said she would not do it again. So I managed to let the situation roll off my shoulders. Everything came to a head with her a few weeks ago. Father-in-law invites us over for a dinner, so we went. My cousin's getting married in a few months and my husband mentioned that we were going to the wedding. It'll be the traditional wedding in accordance to our tribe's customs. Father-in-law said that was cool and mother-in-law asked if there was going to be alcohol there. I didn't really see how that was an issue, so I said yeah. She responded with, Son, you don't need to be around all that drinking. My husband said it was fine and it wouldn't be a problem and she said, No, you don't need to go. It's not safe if there's going to be alcohol there. I said, why wouldn't it be safe? It's not like we're going to be at a bar. It's just going to be my family. She then said, Well, some people can get violent when they drink. I knew exactly what some people meant and that this was a racist remark. I told her that no one would be getting violent and that everyone would have a designated driver. My husband then said that we were going and there wasn't going to be any negotiations about it because he was a grown man and, well, he could make decisions for himself. That just made her even more upset and she starts going off about how it was not a good idea for him to be around a bunch of drunk people. After father-in-law told her calmly, my husband asked why it mattered so much to her anyways, because it's not like we were forcing her to go with us. She then said, Oh, I just don't think it's a good idea for you to be around a bunch of drunk Indians. Well, I was in shock. I knew this was what she meant, but I didn't think she had the balls to flat out say it. You can't be serious, I said. She proceeded to tell me, yeah, I'm serious. I know how you people are and I don't want my son around it. My husband began to lose it and starts yelling at her. I honestly did not have a response to that and I was dumbfounded, as was my father-in-law. My husband tells her that he would not stand for her blatant disrespect and hatefulness any longer and was not going to allow her to be racist towards me. She then said, 
I can't believe you're seriously choosing this person over your own mother. I gave birth to you. I told her to go duck herself and left her out the front door, with my husband following me. She came running out the door after him, begging him not to leave, and he then told her to no, duck you. You're dead to me, and I never want to hear from you or see you again. He was shaking with anger when he got in the car and told me he was done with her and all her bullcrap, and that we would not be going over there ever. Ever since then, she's been blowing up our phone, saying she's sorry, and begging to reconcile. I don't know what to do. My husband's angry and upset that his mother is like this. Does anyone know any advice on how to deal with a situation like this? What's up, everybody? So there is an update for this one. It came out just a little bit later. Looks like the next day. But first, let's check out an additional comment from the OP that was left in the first post in the comment section. It says this. Hey, everyone. First off, I want to thank you for all your kind words and advice. It means a lot to me. I didn't think this would get so much attention as quickly as it did. My husband and I have not contacted with mother-in-law since this all happened. We did, however, set up a group video chat with my husband and I, his brother and father-in-law. I'm at work right now, so I can't make a full update at the moment, but long story short, we discussed everything and father-in-law and husband's brother are on our side. I posted this to see if there was anything else we could possibly do or if we were in the wrong for not wanting to contact with her anymore. But I see now that our decision was probably the most reasonable. I'll go more into details about a post-follow-up when I get off work. Thank you, everybody. Update, one day later, final update. Hey guys, again, this is a follow-up slash update to my post about mother-in-law being racist and calling me some slurs. There's a little more to my story that I could not fit in the original post, so here it is. The reason I didn't have much of an adverse reaction to her words is because sadly, these are things I've heard my whole life. I'm not white passing and you can take one look at me and tell that I'm native. I think that what my mother-in-law said shocked so many people is because many think explicit racism like that is a thing of the past when it's still very much alive in the minds of some. After the incident took place, my husband and I went home. Mother-in-law tried to call and text both of us to beg for forgiveness, told us that she's sorry and wants to make up. I blocked her and my husband told her to leave him alone until he and I work through this. My husband also told his brother about this, and he was absolutely horrified as well. My father-in-law also contacted us and said he was sorry for what happened. He said he didn't know she had thoughts like this, and in the moment he was shocked with that, with what she said, that he didn't know what to say or do. He asked if it would be possible for my husband and I to speak with just him to see what we could do going forward. Well, we agreed. We ended up having a video call between me, my husband, father-in-law, and my husband's brother, who I'll just be calling brother-in-law going forward. Brother-in-law said that there wasn't much he could do because he's several states away, but he would be supporting us in whatever decision we've made and that he would be sending a strongly worded message to mother-in-law. Father-in-law was very emotional about the whole situation, and said he didn't want to lose his son over what mother-in-law said, and that he would do anything to keep contact with my husband. He was upset and confused as to why she thought the way she did, and why it was all coming out now. I said that she may have always felt this way, but because they live and have always lived in pretty white communities, I was the first person she knew to take it out on. Everybody seemed to agree with that assumption. Father-in-law said he wanted to suggest that she goes to therapy or some sort of counseling to work out these feelings within herself. And that he planned to tell her that she had a choice. Either seek help to change her narrow mindset of the world 
are lose both her son and him. He said that I make my husband happy as his father, there's nothing more he could ever want. We all agreed that some counseling would definitely be beneficial to her if she was willing to go. My husband said he doesn't want to talk to mother-in-law right now and that he didn't know when or if it would ever be able to happen. He said that if he had anything to say to her or if there was an emergency, he would go through father-in-law just to get to her. In the meantime, he'll be blocking her number. I said I just didn't want any contact at all, and we all left it at that. I also told my parents and some elders in my community, and they were upset too because this is stuff that they've heard as well. But they commended my husband for having my back and said they understood my decision to go no contact. And well, that's the situation I'm in right now. But I do want to thank everyone that left the kind words and advice on the original post. I made it to see if we had maybe done something wrong or if the decision to go no contact was a bad one. But I now see that it probably was the best option out there. While this situation, what was said, is upsetting to me, the kind words on my first remind me that they're still good in this world. And if anyone else is going through a situation similar, I'll tell you what my dad told me, and I quote, You can never force people to be kind to you, but you can make the choice to surround yourself with kind people. Once again, thank you all. Huge props to the father-in-law, first of all, and it seems like a lot of commenters are thinking the same. The father-in-law, that he's prepared to leave his wife over those views, says a lot about him. It's not hard to tell which parent is responsible for OP's husband being the man he is today. Comment 2 responds to that and says, I don't know, a part of me is a little doubtful. Estrangement is more common than society discusses. Basically, you're on a pick the side that you see a future with with this situation, I think he's ready to drop his wife for other reasons, too, besides the story he even tells you. And final comment says, The way OP describes him seems like a pretty good older guy. He has faith, but is cool with others having their own belief. He could very easily have already recognized that he's much more open to others than his wife, and just felt uncomfortable at that. I think U.S. politics being as polarized brought that to a head in plenty of relationships. So guys, let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a situation similar in your lifetime with your significant other or maybe one of your friend's significant others? Let's hear your stories. Drop them down below. Let's talk about it, guys. Have an amazing day. Consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, peace.